the mojo, it's telling the story. That duck is landing into the wind in our kill hole. <laughs> Yo. What up guys and welcome back to another one. Today I got a good one for y'all. It's one that you guys have been requesting forever and I've been putting it off because it's hot out here and I'm going to have to put on my waders. I'm going to have to get in the water. I'm going to have to sweat in my waders. Yeah. But anyways, today we're going to do beginner duck hunters. So for all you beginners, decoy spreads. So this is going to go with hunting public marshes, hunting rivers, hunting small ponds, hunting wetlands, whatever it is, small decoy spreads to get you by. And I just want to show you guys how easy it is to sit a, sit a good decoy spread. It's all about wind. So we're going to get into the wind and we're going to get into scenarios. We're going to get into how many decoys we're going to be throwing out, how many we need, how many we don't need, where you need to be sitting the mojo in the spread accordingly. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my dozen. Oh. There they are, and we got our mojo as well. So guys, that right there, we got a mojo and a dozen decoys. That is all a guy really needs. With a dozen decoys and a mojo, you can do anything. I have had awesome duck hunts with a dozen, two dozen, and one mojo all day. With duck hunting guys, like I've been preaching to you, you don't need a ton of decoys. You just don't with ducks. But you do need to know how to set up to the wind. It's all about wind, guys ducks land into the wind so we're gonna go over that we're gonna get headed to the pond right now but real quick guys check out the olive green hat and the matching shirt if you guys want to pick up this sweet little matching combo I will link it in the description below every time you guys pick up something from ducks it goes directly to supporting the channel so I can keep bringing content to you folks <laughs> Well, here we are. I'm not going to wear the waders unless I have to. Got the old boots on right now. Hoping that'll do because it is hot, sticky, muggy, all the above. It's summer and your boy is ready for the winter to be here. I'm, I'm so ready for hoodie season. But let's grab our stuff and we're going to get trucking out in the pond. One big thing guys, it, th this video, I, I wanna make extremely realistic for you guys. I want you guys to learn as much as possible. That being said, you guys have been asking about how to sit out the duck decoys, how to sit them out, how to make them look. How do you do it, Bobby? What, what does your duck decoy spread look like on water? Well, let me tell you, a lot of times it's gonna look the same. A lot of times it's gonna look like crap. Due to the fact that I sit up spreads according to the wind. Wind, 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 wind. All last year on my Foul Fridays and how-to videos, I stressed to you guys wind. And guess what, it hasn't changed. I'm still gonna stress wind, wind, wind. So what I'm getting at guys, this is the north side of this pond. Let's say it's during the season and we have a north wind coming this way. So we're gonna sit on this north end of the pond facing south with the wind at our back. With the wind at our back, the duck should come in to our lap like this. Now if we were to sit on the south side with a north wind, they would have to go swoop over those trees and land away from us. So decoying birds, geese, ducks, doesn't matter what it is, snows, you always want them to be as comfortable as they can and provide the environment where they can land in your spread easy. Don't make them work for it. It should be easy for them to land in your spread. All waterfowl always land into the wind. They're heavy birds. Ducks are heavy birds. Geese are heavy birds. They have to use the wind to, to land lightly so they don't go breaking a leg or fall out of the air. Can you imagine them trying to land with the wind? On a 30 mile per hour day, You'd see a duck come in, landing with the linen, you'd just roll it. He'd just roll himself on the ground. All waterfowl, birds in general, land into the wind at all times. So like I said, guys, you do not want to, you don't want to make them land away from you, away from your decoy spread. You want them to land into your decoy spread, into the wind. It doesn't matter what kind of hunting I'm doing, guys. I don't care if it's doves, I don't care if it's pigeons, everything from pigeons to snow geese. I always sit up my spreads and I decide where to sit 
on the water, in the field, on the tree row, wherever, according to the wind. <laughs> Holy smokes, look at them big old things. That is not goose poop. That is crane poop. Yeah, this little island, I'm always seeing a couple cranes uh, sit out here and peck and eat tons of little mussels and, and tons of things out here. This is a little island, peninsula gigamaru here. And it's perfect because during the season, it would be a north wind. The wind would be going that way and the ducks would be coming in like this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set up our dozen decoys. We're gonna set up our mojo. And I wanna show you guys a couple scenarios on good beginner decoy spreads. Beginner, expert, novice, I don't care. Care, I, I, here on the channel, you know guys, I don't judge if you're beginners. I almost love you even more because I love how adamant you guys are about learning. All you beginners out there, I always ask you to drop your comments down below for video ideas. And that's exactly why I'm doing this video. It's because a lot of you requested it. So if all my beginner waterfowlers out there appreciate it, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up for your brother right now. All right, a bunch of you have been asking about the teal decoys that I did in a video, uh, I think it was last week. On teal decoys, I do group them together. A lot of times if you see teal with big ducks, they will be swimming by themselves. They will be swimming in a group. The, the teal usually tend to group up. So what I do usually is I'll grab all my teal first. So I feel like those are almost the most important a lot of times down here in Kansas just because we get a lot of till during the early, early season. We don't see big ducks until mid-October. So what I got is half a dozen till. Let's put them out. So what I'm gonna do, this little channel here, I always like to keep my ducks close to the bank. I never throw ducks way out in the middle. You, you don't see ducks just swimming out in the middle of ponds and, and feeding out in the middle, unless it's shallow and there's food out there on the bottom but for the most part this is what I do so now for all my big ducks I'm gonna blend a couple in here gonna get deep quick on me. I'm only gonna be able to go out so far here. There we go. Oh boy, isn't that a pretty, 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 pretty sight. I cannot wait for the season to be back, I'm telling you. All right, we got them all set up. I'm sweating my buns off. But this is what we got going, guys. This is just a dozen decoys in one mojo. So what do we got going on? We have a little bit of a J going on. And what we did is we populated all of the till decoys together. This is just what I do. You know, I don't think it's really a big, big deal, but this is what I've always done is keep my till together. So obviously our goal right here is to get ducks to land in this general area up behind the mojo or even on the side over here due to the fact that the wind is at our backs so just like the mojo it's telling the story that duck is landing into the wind in our kill hole now little bitty spread look at that we could just have a marsh stool sit back in these weeds and you would never see us so basically this is where I would be sitting if I was hunting this little setup. Gives me about a 15, 20 yard shot. You're gonna have them at close range, but let me tell you, it's gonna be fun. On them heavy, heavy north wind cold days, you can expect to decoy them ducks all the way up close. If it's heavy wind and cold, that wind is gonna help them get in tighter and land right where they want to. If they wanna land right up on the bank or if they wanna land close to any type of structure or bank because that wind keeps them afloat so they can they can go where they want with no wind it they get to second guess a lot they get to say "Ooh, I, I like that or "Ooh, I don't like that they just get to second guess a lot so on those windy 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 days 
I'm telling you, it's key. It's the best on windy days. But on all my spreads, I always give a kill hole. I always give them an area to land. The mojo is gonna tell the ducks, hey, let's land right there where that guy's landing. So a mojo, there's two good things about a mojo. For one, it gets attention. It's flapping, as you can see. You can see that thing from a long ways if you're a duck. And two, it tells the ducks that are coming into the spread where to land. And when you place that mojo, you, you need to place it in the right spot because if it's, if it's facing into the wind or if it's just kind of in a weird spot, the ducks are going to be like, hey, that, that's not right. We don't want to land there. And they might just completely flare on you and leave and don't give you a second chance. So this is an easy little spread. These till almost look like they're coming around the corner and swimming into the spread. And then we got our big ducks stacked up in the corner because like I said, there's that north wind coming this way. It's cold. So they're going to be stacked up in here trying to get out of that wind and feed along that bank. Now again, guys, you can have more than a dozen. And you, and, uh, you can take some till from over on this side. You can throw them over there. It really doesn't matter. I've always just kept the till by themselves, spread out a little bit, kind of on one side by themselves. So another good thing is scouting, guys. Scouting your spots. If you find a pond just like this, you try to really pay attention of what duck's on there, what kind, and how many. If there's not very many, this little spread is going to do you just fine. Don't need six dozen, five dozen, eight, ten dozen floater ducks. One to two dozen will do each and every one of you guys just fine, I promise you. But there's a little creek running in here, and as you can tell, it gives these teal some really good motion. Look at them. They just look awesome. Swinging back and forth. Now you can tell over there there's no current. And uh, our big ducks are sitting pretty still. So again, windy days, motion. Windy days offer more decoy motion. As well as if you have just still water like our uh, big ducks over here just sitting not moving. Get you a jerk cord. I know a lot of you know about jerk rigs. You've used them. You probably have them. If you guys want me to do a homemade jerk rig, drop a comment down below and I'll spit one of them out next week. But like I said, when you see ducks, so if I'm sitting here and I see ducks come over that tree, I'm like, oh boy, there they are. I'm going to get my jerk rig going out here and I'm going to start making some swirls. Essentially, all a jerk rig does is that basically gets your decoys moving. It adds some ripple to the still water and just gets them moving. Because a, a lot of you guys know, live ducks, when they're in a little pool like this and it's still water, maybe no wind, they're gonna move and they're gonna make ripples. So just having the ripples, it's not about really making that decoy move a lot, but having just the ripples shows that there's live activity on that water. The ripples are provided by ducks swimming moving the water. So a jerk rig, yes, it moves the decoy, but it just shows it represents live ducks swimming and moving that water around. So one of the key things here, a couple key things is one, I always do use a mojo when I duck hunt. I'm telling you guys, it's not so much about what your spread looks like. If you spread everything out, you offer a kill hole, that's great. Sitting up to the wind is so important. Because if a duck realizes that he can't or she can't land into the wind easily to land with your decoys, they're probably going to leave. Wind is a huge deciding factor for ducks and geese, whether or not they're going to decide to land in your spread or not. I had to learn the hard way, guys. I just sit literally hundreds of spreads, you know, over years and years and years to understand how important wind was. And I tell you guys, I've had some ugly looking spreads. But just because I was set up accordingly to the wind, we killed them. So I'm going to stress to you guys, it's not always about what your spread looks like. It's not always about how many decoys you got. It's always, it's always about wind. Set up accordingly to the wind. Have that wind at your back. If you can't have it at your back, hunt them off a side wind. But never, ever, 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 unless you just don't have another option and you really want to hunt, Never set up with the wind in your face and try to decoy them in front of you. It's hard. A lot of times I'll move them around. So as you can see now, I took some of the teal. I threw some of the teal up here. 
teal, they get curious, they're fast swimmers. A lot of teal will paddle around and they'll, they'll uh, naturally swim around all the other ducks and blah, 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 because teal are so fast. If you see ducks uh, coming and then they're flaring you, they're not doing it, get out there, throw your decoys around. I do like adding the teal out here, make them look like they're swimming into a spread. Just like with Canada geese, we always use the tall walkers that, to make them look like they're walking from the field into the spread basically into the kill hole. So it's kind of the, the same theory. Get some floaters out here on the edge of the spread, make it look like they're swimming in to join up to the party, you know. But honestly, guys, I appreciate you guys being here. I hope this video gave you some uh, good information. I really wanted to hit wind. You're gonna hear me talk about it, I know. I probably said it a hundred times in this video already, but I don't care. I want you guys to understand that that is the most important thing that we can deal with is learning and using wind to our advantage. But I want to thank you guys for watching so much. Subscribe if you guys haven't. Go picky up something from ducks just like these olive hats and t-shirts. It goes directly to supporting your boy. But for real y'all, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>